everyone, and welcome to the Week 18 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Bohr. We start at PPL Park in the wild 3-3 draw between Philly and Colorado, and I think the Rapids should have been down a man as early as the 11th minute. Look at how defender Shane O'Neill goes in studs up on Danny Cruz, and pretty high up the leg too. He got away with just a yellow from referee Soren Stoika. There were actually two red cards in this one, and both were issued to the Union. First, in the 76th minute, the referee whistles for a penalty and a red card on Michael LaHood for this high boot in the box on Jared Watts. Now, according to Pro, the professional referee organization, the red was issued for serious foul play, but I think that's a harsh ruling by Stoika. Could you argue that LaHood endangers the safety of his opponent? Sure, but what about Watts lowering his head into the kick? And I also don't see excessive force or brutality in LaHood's play. Those would also qualify as serious foul play. So while I agree with the penalty kick call, it's definitely a foul. The red card I find hard to justify. The second red to the Union was shown to Amobi Okugo, and it came after the final whistle. The word from Pro for the reason on this one? Yep, you guessed it, foul and abusive language. One last play to look at from this game, and it's a goal called back for offside in the 63rd minute. Great eye by assistant CJ Morganti. Sebastian Latou looks offside to me at the moment that the shot goes off the foot of his teammate. Moving on to Buckshaw Stadium on Friday night and visiting DC United earned an early penalty in the 11th minute. There's no question about it. Chris Rolfe fires the shot and Quakes right back Brandon Barklage has his arm outstretched and blocks the shot. Eddie Johnson says, thank you very much. The other play to look at brought back flashes of Neymar's injury in the World Cup quarterfinals. It's the 79th minute and Bobby Boswell drives his knee into Steven Leonard's back. That hurts just watching it. Unlike the Neymar play, I think Boswell was sizing him up. And for me, that's a red card. Next to Vancouver's BC place where Chivas USA recorded their fourth straight win. But it was not without controversy. First, should the Whitecaps have had a penalty called in the 40th minute, which would have given them the chance to double their lead to 2-0. You see how Eric Torres kicks the ball into his own hand in the box, but that's the very definition of ball to hand. Good no call by referee Armando Villarreal. Then there's the corner kick that led to the Chivas equalizer right after halftime. The Caps were disputing whether this was a corner kick to begin with. But when you play the video in slow motion, you see the spin of the ball changes during its flight, which tells me it nicked Steven Betashore's head. Corner was the right call. To the 69th minute and the red card that left the Caps with 10 men. Left back Jordan Harvey with the flying, two-footed, straight-legged lunge on Chivas USA's Osvaldo Minda. The ref nails it. And then one of the most interesting plays of the weekend happened in second half stoppage time when Pedro Morales thought he had the equalizer. You see how he pokes the ball out of Dan Kennedy's grasp into the goal. But the rules are pretty clear about this. Page 120 in the law says, quote, when a goalkeeper has gained possession of the ball with his hands, he cannot be challenged by an opponent. Wait a minute, you might ask, was he in possession? The rule says, quote, a goalkeeper is considered to be in control of the ball while the ball is between his hands or between his hand and any surface. And the latter was the case here. Villarreal once again, flawless. Moving on to stop up center and a very debatable play in the 85th minute between the LA Galaxy and Real Salt Lake. Down 1-0, RSL are pushing for the equalizer when Juninho's high boot nicks Chris Wingard in the box. Same way I thought the Lahoud on Watts play was a penalty in Philadelphia, this was identical in my opinion, but referee Silvio Petrescu doesn't want to hear it. In second half stoppage time, I thought Petrescu did well not to whistle a penalty as Nick Romando pokes the ball away from Landon Donovan. Good play by the goalkeeper. But Romando wasn't so lucky the second time. He whiffs just moments later and gets Marcelo Sarvas. Clear penalty, but not such a slam dunk goal. Not with Romando in the nets. Shifting gears to Gillette Stadium, and there's another foul I thought could have been sanctioned with a red card. It's the 16th minute, and look how Andy Dorman follows through on Quincy Ameriqua. I don't care that Dorman nicks the ball, but he could have also done some serious damage to Ameriqua, given where the studs land. I would have sent him off, but he doesn't even get a yellow. Another big call for referee Jose Carlos Rivero in the 74th minute. Revolution goalkeeper Bobby Shuttleworth comes outside his box to challenge for the ball, and there's a shout for a handball, but I think it's ball to hand. Good no call. Ten minutes later, however, the referee had to blow his whistle for a penalty kick. You see, Gonzalo Segar is here with the nudge on Revolution for Jerry Bankston. Although Bankston looks like he's seeking the contact, it's there. And Segares doesn't even protest, but his goalkeeper bails him out. However, was Sean Johnson's PK save tainted? 
As JT Chang points out on Twitter, Johnson is well off his line before the kick is taken by Chris Tierney. That's not allowed by the rule book. That should have been retaken. To Red Bull Arena, where New York notched a 4-1 win over the crew. They didn't end up needing it, but Tim Cahill wanted a penalty called in the 15th minute when he went up for this header in the box, and it looks like Michael Parkhurst gets a nudge on him. But we don't have a better look at this, and referee Ted Uncle felt there wasn't enough there. But that wasn't the most controversial play. For that, fast forward to the 85th minute, when Uncle, after consulting with assistant Peter Manikowski, went to his back pocket to send off Columbus left back Bernardo Anur for kicking the ball at an opponent after a foul was called. Look, it was unnecessary, yes, but I don't think this was violent conduct. Not the way he kicks it. I mean, that's not even a proper kick. I thought that was harsh. We'll see if the crew appeal. Manikowski, the benchside referee assistant, was called into action again in stoppage time on the goal by Eric Alexander. These are tough calls to make when players are crisscrossing like that, but he got it right. Similar play happened in Seattle on the Clint Dempsey goal. You see how Deuce is heading toward goal while Will Johnson is moving in the opposite direction, but he keeps him on for that split second. Great eye by assistant George Gansner. And lastly, we end up at Stad Saputo, where Felipe Martins wanted two penalty kicks in this one. First, in the 33rd minute on this 50-50 ball in the box. But both Felipe and Sporting KC right back Juliao missed the ball entirely. Play on was the right call. And then in the second half, Felipe again took a tumble in the box, but I think it's a great tackle by Sporting's Benny Failhaber. There was a third weak penalty claim, this one by the visitors with nine minutes remaining. We're not helped by the camera angle, but I don't see enough contact here by Hasun Kamara on Aurelien Colan. Referee Eladro Grajeda again does well to look away. But there are two plays that might require a second look from the disciplinary committee. In the 20th minute, Matt Beasler is called for the handball while on the ground. But look how Andres Romero also gets in a kick to the head, even though Beasler doesn't look bothered by it. But to me, it felt very similar to last week's Lee Wynn stomp on John Sturzer, and that earned a suspension for win. Lastly, in the 93rd minute, this play caught our eye between Gorka Larea and Graham Zussi. As Montreal's Larea is getting up off the ground, you see how he flings his hand towards Zussi's face. We can't tell if there's contact for sure, but Zussi does seem to react to it. We'll see if the disciplinary committee gives it another look. That's all we have for this week. For our editor, Albert Lanzillo, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.